Good morning. Welcome to Victory Baptist Church this morning. Let's all get a songbook stand and turn to page 140. Page 140. <laughs> joy it is to be in the Lord's house this morning. Certainly glad to see each and every one of you here today. And we welcome each one today to the house of God. We also want to welcome those who are listening by way of radio and what a blessing it is to be able to share the service with you this morning. And as we go to the Lord in prayer, let's do pray for the service today. Amen. Pray that God will just meet with us. How many glad you're here? Say amen. 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 Well, I like that. And I tell you, I'd rather be here than anywhere I know other than heaven, amen? And it is good to be in God's house. So as we pray, let's do remember those that are lost, those in our families that are lost. Also, if you will, continue to uh, pray for our school here at Victory. Uh, we're just about a month away from uh, starting the new school year. And so if you will, really pray uh, that God will bless the upcoming year uh, with our staff and students and all the families. Also our troops, let's continue to pray uh, for them and their families, also our missionaries and their families. Also, let's continue to remember Brother Marvin Robertson, Kenley Edwards, uh, Lisa Adcock, Patsy Franklin. Remember Patsy, she had some surgery this past week on both of, their, of her hands, so pray for her that she'll uh, have a speedy recovery. Also, uh, John Matthews, D.D. Edwards, Heidi Laws, Pat Hannaford, Tammy Brower, Diane Woodle, Ryan Roars, Kenneth Edwards, Louise Fawcett, uh, Marshall Tysinger, uh, Brother Dale Matthews, also Darlene Hanford. Remember her in prayer as she's scheduled for surgery this coming Friday. And pray that God will move in that need there. Also uh, continue to remember Stephanie and Cooper Ellington. Uh, Donald and Betty Ann Talbot, remember them especially today. Uh, Timmy Ford, Carolyn Wright, Ellis Tuck, uh, Marianne Williamson, Jeanette Champion, uh, Walker Talbert, uh, Ernest Dickerson, Gracie Matthews, Tony and Nate Bobbitt, Maggie Carr, Fern Setliff, William Cash, 
Tiffany Green, Richard Chilton, Evelyn Chilton, uh, Charlene Hanford, and also, uh, if you will remember me, I have three doctor's appointments this uh, next couple of days. As we go to the doctor, everything will turn out good. Also, Miss Newman and Miss Martin and Nancy Murray, uh, Bob and Dot Smith, Miss Franklin, uh, Brother Charles Thompson, Billy Glasscock, Lois Major, Pat Matthews, and Joyce Poole, remembering these in prayer. And uh, pray that God will meet the need there. And then uh, Miss Bobbitt, her sister, uh, sister-in-law, uh, was in an automobile accident this week, and, and her sister also was with her, right? And uh, so let's remember them in prayer, that God will touch them, amen, as they recover from uh, this accident that they were in uh, this past week, amen. Pray for the choir today as they sing and the special music and the word of God, that God's word will speak to our hearts, amen. And let's just thank the Lord for all of his blessings uh, upon our lives. Amen. So let's bow for prayer. And as we pray, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Ricky Pendergrass, if you will, to come and lead us to the Lord in prayer. And as he leads us, let's all pray together. I'm glad God can hear us all at the same time. Amen. Amen. I'm glad our God is infinite. I mean, he is, he can do anything. There's nothing impossible with God. And I'm thankful to be able to know that he's my Father, amen, this morning. So let's pray together, amen. Let's bow here. Dear Lord, we just want to thank you, dear Lord, for just allowing us to, to be here again on this Lord's Day. And we thank you for all your many blessings. And we thank you for watching over us and keeping us all safe. And all the ones that were traveling, dear Lord, and thank you for bringing them all home safe, dear Lord, and there's many more that's still traveling, dear Lord. Yes. And we ask you, dear God, just to bless here to, this morning, dear Lord. We pray to just bless all the requests that was mentioned this morning, dear Lord. And we ask you just bless and touch and meet every need. Yes. We ask you, dear God, this morning, that whether you're listening by radio or here this morning, dear Lord, that I pray, dear God, there's one here that's lost that don't know you as their Lord and Savior. I pray today that they could let them know they could give their life to Jesus. And we ask you, this, dear Lord, just to bless the preaching of your word, the singing of the choir, the special singing, dear Lord. Whatever's done, dear Lord, we, we do it to praise your name and honor your name. And we ask you to bless it all in our Savior's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
let's all stand up, turn around and fellowship as the choir comes down. We're going to release Children's Church this time. struggles and the burdens we face how in every situation we find sufficient grace and we know that these trials are not worthy to compare to the glory that awaits us in heaven so fair so I would raise glory in my infirmities for God's strength he's made perfect when I am weak I may have to face this trial but I'll make it by God's grace and I may not see the victory in 
until I see him face to face. And when I leave this world and I go home, I'll lay these burdens down. I will trade the old cross for a crown. To be absent from this body is to be present with my king and though i'm so unworthy he don't owe me one thing but he promised when we get there our sorrows will be gone and i will join the angels and sing a happy song tears will be wiped away when jesus comes again and peace will reign forever but until then i may have to face this trial but i'll make it by god's grace and i may not see the victory until i see him face to face and when i leave this world and i go home i'll lay these burdens down i will trade the cross and I will cling to the old ragged cross and I will trade the old cross for a crown I may have to face this trial but I'll make it by God's grace and I may not see the victory until I see him face to face and when I leave this world and I go home I'll lay these burdens down I will trade the old cross for a crown Amen. Praise God. I'm glad that God's grace will be there. Amen. No matter what you're going through. Amen. If you take your Bible this morning, turn with us to the book of Psalms. Psalm 107. Psalm 107 this morning. Psalm 107, and I want to begin reading in verse number 23. In Psalm 107, verse number 23, the Bible says, They that go down to the sea in ships, that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heaven. They go down again into the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad because they be quiet, so he bringeth them unto their desired haven. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Our Heavenly Father, as we bow today, Lord, again thankful for the privilege to be here in your house this morning. Thankful, Father, for all that we have heard, God, from your word already. Thankful, Father, for the songs, for the prayers, for the fellowship, but God, most of all, thank you, God, for your presence here in our midst this morning. And God, as we look to the word of God again, we pray, Father, that our hearts would be open. And Lord, we would hear, Lord, not just with our ears, 
But God, we would hear with our hearts what the Word of God has for us this morning. God, I pray that you'd deal with every heart, but especially, Lord, if there's someone in this building that's lost, that, God, this will be the day they would say yes to Christ. Lord, should there be one listening by radio, God, I'm glad that right where they are right now, they can call upon the name of the Lord and they can be saved. And I pray you'd speak to our hearts, revive us again. And Father, all that you do, we'll praise you, we'll thank you. For we ask it in the name above all names, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I want to preach this morning from these verses and I I want to look at a few more in this chapter, the Lord willing. But I want to get my thought there from verse number 27. The Bible says that they reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wits end. I want to preach on the thought at wits end. Now this chapter is an exciting display of the redemption of God. In the first three verses, the redeemed are exhorted to speak of their experience with the goodness of God. In response, four testimonies are given. Each is followed with encouragement to praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For the psalmist, his whole concept of God is wrapped up in one word, and that is the word good. Amen. Because God is good. He is moved to help man in his great need. Because God is good, he extends his mercy to us, which results in the acts of his saving grace. It's the only in the New Testament that we find the words that God is love. The psalmist did not say this, but we find that this is what he had in mind. Amen. Not only did he have in mind that God was good, but it was because of God's love yes. that he acted on the behalf of mankind. Amen. Amen. And so we find that because God is love, he is touched with the feeling of our infirmities and is concerned with the needs of our lives. Someone asked the question this week, was God concerned about every detail of our lives? And I want to say yes, he is concerned. He's so concerned that the Bible says that the very hairs of our head are numbered, amen. God knows everything. He knows our times when we're sitting down. He knows our times when we're getting up. He knows everything about us, amen. And he is concerned with every detail of our lives, amen. And so the Psalms here presents a, a series of pictures. It contains series of, uh, of distresses and utmost extremity which are representative of the wide abundance of troubles that afflict men in the world. And his purpose in showing us this was to bring our attention to the fact that there is no area of our existence beyond help from heaven. Amen. I'm glad no matter what's going on in our lives, I'm glad there's help from heaven, amen, that can be gained. In every peril, every calamity known to man, God has the deliverance that we need, amen. God is able. I want you to notice some things this morning, and I hope that you'll listen very closely. First of all, notice the facts they faced. The Bible says in verses 4, 10, 18, and 26, four different things that were going on. They wandered in the wilderness. They were bound in affliction and iron. They draw near unto the gates of death. They go down again to the depths. The four sets of circumstances in these verses are representative of the troubles that people experience in the world. Now, trouble is a fact of life. Amen. I mean, you're never going to be without it. 
You're, you're never going to live trouble free. You're never going to be problem free. But I'm glad there's a God in heaven that has a need, can meet the need of every trouble you face, amen, in your lives. In verses 4 through 9, we have a picture of those who were lost in the desert. The Bible said there in verse 4, they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. These people were wandering in a pathless waste. No house, city, or oasis was in sight. They were hungry, thirsty, and almost exhausted. All hope was fast coming to an end, and time was running out. Utter gloom would soon seize their souls, and despair would cover them with darkness. They needed help, and any delay in receiving it would be the death of them. Amen. That's those who were lost in the desert. Number two. There in verse number 10, the Bible says, Such is set in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. They were locked in a dungeon. So we not only see a group who were lost in the desert, but now we see a group who were locked in the dungeon. They were prisoners. You say, why were they prisoners? Look at verse number 11. Because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Anytime you go against the word of God, you can mark down troubles on the way. Amen. And the Bible said they were locked up in the dungeon because that they had gone against the very words of God. Amen. They held God in contempt, despised his authority, and ignored his laws. Listen to me this morning. God rules in each man by each man's consent. Now listen to this. God rules in each man by each man's consent. The day I got saved, God, God didn't come knock me down and say, you're going to accept me. God showed me his love toward me in Calvary and offered me a free gift of salvation if I would accept him as my Savior. I had a free will, a choice to make. Thank God I made the choice to take Christ, amen, and get saved. But God works in every man only by man's consent. God's not going to force himself on you. He will deal with you. He will offer you. But friend, you've got to be the one to make the choice, amen. And so if God deals uh, with each man or in each man by each man's consent. Now when men will not let God rule over them, God leaves them to walk in their own ways, to follow their own course. Amen. The surest way to bondage is to fail, is to, uh, is to, fail to be submissive to God. The people pictured in this passage chose to leave God out of their lives. And the, the, back, the black shadows of the prison house enslaved them, amen, like those who were lost in the desert. They were without help and without hope. But then notice the third group. There in verse number 18, look at it if you will. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat. They draw near unto the gates of death. Here were those who were laid near death. The people pictured here are those who have been brought to the very edge of the grave by their own foolishness and sin. Did you know that a life of sin is ruinous to the health of an individual? I have seen people whose lives that their whole lives has been lived for nothing but sin, and it shows. I have seen people, I look at their picture, and I know how old they are, and I cannot believe how old they look. Sin, my friend, multitudes of times is the cause, amen, of ruinous health in our lives. Amen. Wickedness wastes the body. Hello. You say, I don't believe that. Well, you must not believe the Bible. 
The Bible says in Galatians 6, 8, they that sow to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Amen. That's the reason these old bodies many times get corrupted faster is because of sin. Amen. Oh, they were in death's jurisdiction through their foolishness and sin. Death had almost foreclosed upon them. But now notice the fourth group. In verse number 26, the Bible said they mount up to the heaven, they go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of troubled. The Bible said here they were lowered into the deep. Waves like the mountains take them to the top and plunge them to the depths again. They are weary, wet, discouraged, and hopeless of any type of escape. Their hearts melt with fear, amen. Oh, their ship is but a plaything, tossed back and forth on the rolling waves. No steering device or human knowledge could help them. The ship is so strained and beaten about that they hardly know what keeps them afloat. Like the ones that are lost in the desert, those who are locked in a dungeon, and those laid near death, these were lowered into the depths without any hope. Amen. And so that's the facts that they faced. But notice secondly the fear that they felt. Our text verse says in verse 27 at the latter portion of that verse says and are at their wits end. That's what they felt. Amen. They were at their wits end. There's no doubt their hardships were great. They wandered in the wilderness. They were bound in affliction and iron near the gates of death. And they go down into the depths because of their troubles. Their souls fainted within them. Amen. Their hearts were brought down with labor. They were afflicted. Their soul was melted because of trouble. Because of their hardships that, that was great upon them. Also their hearts were groping. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunk man. Trouble had put them in a spin and they were so dizzy they could hardly stand on their feet. When trouble comes, it is hard to keep your balance. Amen. Their hardships were great. Their heads were giddy as, as a result. And then here's the sad part. Their hope was gone. They were at their wit's end. When you get to wit's end, you're in trouble. Amen. And many of us have been there before. They were at their wit's end. This verse expresses the feelings of each group in their distress. They were at their wit's end. Acts chapter 27, we read of another storm of a little vessel that was headed for Italy. Had 276 souls on board. In the 20th verse of chapter 27 of Acts, we are told that they said all hope that we should be saved was taken away. In other words, they were at their wit's end. All hope that they should be saved was taken away. That's what it means to be at wit's end. You have come to a place of despair where the any hope any hope whatsoever of human help is gone. That's wit's end. Amen. This may have happened to you. This may be happening to you. It could happen to you in relation to your health. It could happen to you in relation to a legal problem. It could happen to you in your marriage. It could happen to you in bereavement. And beloved, there are many things that happen that brings people to their wit's end. That any hope of being saved humanly has been taken away. You are at wit's end. Listen to me. Man's resources are inadequate and seemingly nothing can be done when you get to wit's end. But following the facts they faced... The fear that was felt, but notice this. This is what I love about it. Don't cut me off now. If you do, you'll leave here even more discouraged than you was when you got here. But notice the faith that they formed. 
The Bible tells us <laughs> four times. Look at it with me. In verse number six, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. Look at verse 13. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. Look at verse number 19. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. Look at verse 28. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. Amen. We find that they had a, that they, the faith that was formed, the problems that brought them to wit's end, forced them to believe that their only hope and their only help was the Lord. Amen. Sometimes God allows us to get to wit's end for us to realize it's him and him alone who is able to do what needs to be done in our lives. Amen. You see, there are many, listen, there are many ways into trouble. But there's only one way out of trouble. Amen. Oh, we can get in trouble in so many ways. Can't we? Do like this. If you don't want to say amen, just nod your head. Amen. If you don't, neighbor, poke them and make them do it. Amen. <laughs> well, there's so many ways to get into trouble, but we only have one way out of it. Amen. amen. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. They recognized God was their only solution, and they requested his help. Notice the period in which they did it. They cried unto the Lord. When did they do it? They did it when they were at the end of their resources. Then, amen, when their backs were to the wall, they cried unto the Lord. The period in which they did it, then the person to whom it was directed, they cried unto the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. When we stop crying to other people and lift our heads toward heaven and cry to him, then business is going to start picking up. Amen. Amen. They cried unto the Lord. They recognized their need and requested the help of God himself. Hey, can I say this morning this? If you're in trouble, cry. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Cry out. Amen. It doesn't matter how you got where you are. Thank God, realize you're in trouble and cry to the Lord. Amen. That's what you need to do. So if you're in trouble, cry. If you're lost, cry out to the Lord. If you're enslaved, cry out unto the Lord. He came to set you free. If you're sick, cry unto the Lord. Amen. Uh, he is the great physician. Uh, thank God if the storms are overwhelming you, cry unto the Lord. Uh, thank God he is the stiller of the storms. Amen. The Bible is filled with illustration of those who came to their wit's end. There's some of you who have been there. At wit's end. You know what you did? You know why you're here? You cried unto the Lord. <laughs> Amen. But wouldn't it be wonderful if we only had to experience that one time in life? But sometimes over and over and over again, we experience it. But aren't you glad there's a God in heaven who neither slumbers nor sleeps? <laughs> He's not on vacation. He's not busy. He's always there. When you cry unto him, amen. Notice the Bible tells us about several places. I won't be able to give them all. But in Exodus chapter 15, very familiar story we know. In Exodus 15 verses 23 to 25, Moses came to his wit's end. The children of Israel were disgruntled. <laughs> They were dissatisfied and full of murmuring. Sounds like a Baptist church to me. <laughs> Not this one, but others I've heard about. And it was a tremendous problem for Moses. One he couldn't handle by himself. At his wit's end, you know what he did? He cried unto the Lord. God said, you just let me take care of it. Amen. Amen. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, Hannah was at her wit's end. She longed to have a child. She wanted to have a child, but she was barren. What did she do? 
she cried unto the Lord. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 37, Hezekiah received a threatening letter. What did Hezekiah do? At his wit's end, he prayed unto the Lord. He carried that letter in there, laid it on the altar and said, God, look at this. God, look what I just got in the mail. And God said, don't you worry about it. I'll take care of it. Amen. He cried unto the Lord. He got to wit's end and he turned to the Lord. Amen. Amen. This morning, I'm telling you, you and I, we're in trouble. We just need to cry to the Lord. Amen. Oh, in Acts chapter 9, we find that the believers in Joppa were at their wit's end. Their beloved friend and sister Dorcas had died. What did they do? They sent for Peter. He kneeled down and prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. When you don't know what to do, cry to the Lord. Amen. Acts chapter 12, the early Christians were at their wit's end. James had been beheaded, and Peter was in prison likely to be beheaded. But what did they do? They cried unto the Lord. What I'm saying this morning is, folks, if you're in trouble and you know you are, all you got to do is get to the Lord. You're going to finally get to wit's end. So let's just cry to him. Amen. Amen. Let's get to the Lord. Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16 were at their wit's end. Throwed in prison, midnight, boy, they just started singing and praying, praising God. And God brought the deliverance. But notice lastly, notice the favor they found. The Bible said, and he delivered them. Amen. Look at verse number six. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress, distresses. Look at verse 13. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. Verse number 19. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. Verse 28. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. We find the favor of that God showed them as they cried unto the Lord. They were saved from their troubles. Amen. He delivered them. He delivered the lost out of the desert. He led them in the right way into the city of habitation. He satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry with goodness. He opened the prison doors and brought the prisoners out of bondage. He broke the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. He sent his word and healed the sick. He delivered them out of their destructions. He calmed the storm for the sailors and tamed the waves. He brought them to their desired haven. And can I say this morning, he can do the same for you and for me. Hey, let me ask you, are you standing at wit's end corner? Listen to this. Are you standing at wit's end corner, Christians with troubled brow? Are you thinking of what is before you and all the trouble you are bearing now? Does all the world seem against you and you in the battle alone? Remember at which end corner is just where God's power is shown. Are you standing at which end corner, blinded with wearing pain, feeling that you cannot endure it, that you cannot bear the strain, bruised through the constant suffering, dizzy, dazed, and numb? Remember, at which end corner is where Jesus loves to come. Are you standing at which end corner your work before you spread? All lying begun, unfinished, and pressing on heart and head, longing for strength to do it, stretching out with trembling hands. Remember at which end corner the burden bearer stands. Are you at which end corner? Then you are in the very spot to learn the wondrous resources of him who faileth not. No doubt to a brighter pathway, your steps will soon be moved. But only at wit's end corner is the God who is also proved. Amen. Hey, the favor they found was not that which kept them from the trouble. But it carried them through the trouble. Oh, we don't want trouble. God, deliver me from this trouble. 
That don't always happen. You're going through it. Did you hear what I said? You're going through it. You're not going to stay there. You're going to through. Going to go through it. Amen. Amen. He delivered them from it. Amen. He brought them through. They were saved. God delivered them. Why? Because they realized they were in trouble. They cried unto the Lord. Guess what? God began to move. And then this is what we need to do. Look at it. Last portion of that, what I read this morning. Verse number 30. Then are they glad because they be quiet. So he bringeth them into their desired haven. Look at verse 31. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Oh, listen, when God does something for you, it ought, to, it ought to cause you to get excited enough that it ought to cause us to get excited about it. Amen. We ought to praise him. We ought to thank him in the congregation. Amen. In the midst of the elders, we ought to lift his name up and, and praise him for his goodness and his mercy. Hey, listen, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. And I say this morning, cry to him. It don't matter how you got where you are. You just need to get to where you know you need to get to, to get the help. And that help comes from the Lord. And the only way you're going to be delivered is through and by the grace of God. Our Heavenly Father, I want to thank you this morning for your word. Oh, God, what an encouragement to my heart your word is. Lord, when we're in trouble, when we're facing difficulties, going through storms, I'm glad that we can cry unto the Lord. And that we have a God in heaven who is able to do what needs to be done. Our deliverance comes, Lord, with thee. God, speak to every heart this morning. Lord, there may be someone today that needs to cry unto the Lord to be saved. Lord, there may be those this morning that have got away from you. They've grown cold and indifferent, backslid on God. They need to cry unto the Lord and ask God to forgive them. Lord, help us this morning to turn to you with all of our heart. For we know, Lord, our deliverance comes in only one place, and that's with thee. God, speak to every heart, and we'll thank you and praise you for what you do in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 318, as we stand and sing this morning, what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, you're in trouble? I invite you to get to this altar today. Cry. Just cry to the Lord. Turn to Him with all of your heart. You got burdens? Bring them to Jesus. Casting all your care upon Him. Won't you come? Bring those needs. Bring those burdens. Oh, listen. He wants to help you. He wants you to acknowledge the need and to call on him. That's what you've got to do. Would you come? Oh, what a friend. What a friend we have. Just bring it all to him. we do not carry everything everything to God in prayer while these are praying you need to bring your burdens you need to bring your, your troubles to the Lord bring them all cry to the Lord God's able God is able